In the headlines, police investigate allegations of inappropriate conduct against a minor by prominent public figures. Hospital officials told to prepare for unavoidable challenges as plans for a new hospital enter a new phase. And the governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank warns against global threats to Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. I'm Andrea Lee with the Channel 5 News details after this. Thank you for staying with us. The parliamentary representative for the Sufre constituency, Ian Pinar, says he has taken a decision to resign as a minister of government in order to adequately address allegations of misconduct. Mr. Pinar's resignation does not affect his role as parliamentary representative for the Sufre constituency. In recent days, allegations of serious inappropriate behavior have been made against me in the media and elsewhere in relation to matters which the public rightly is and has been most concerned about. I believe I have a moral and fiduciary responsibility to you to address you on this matter. In light of these allegations, I consider that my continued presence in the cabinet can adversely impact the very important work this government is doing and must continue to do for the people of Dominica. In order to allow me to more appropriately address the allegations against me, and also in order to focus on other very important personal matters, I have earlier today tendered to the Honorable Prime Minister my resignation as a Minister of Government with immediate effect. I will continue to serve my constituents of the Sufria constituency, pending what I am confident will be a successful conclusion of this matter. I would like to take the opportunity to extend my profound thanks to the Honorable Prime Minister and leader of my party for giving me the opportunity to serve our blessed country at the highest level. I also wish to thank the constituents of the Sufria constituency for the support and confidence they have reposed in me. I assured you of my continued readiness to serve you. I thank you. Police are investigating a report of unlawful and inappropriate conduct against an underaged girl. According to Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, the three accused hold positions of trust and influence in our society. On Wednesday, Police PRO Pelham John Baptist issued a statement on the report following widespread speculation on talk shows and social media since Monday. In an effort to quell public anxiety and also to protect the interests of innocent citizens, I wish to inform the general public of the developments relating to information tendered to law enforcement officials by a 15-year-old female and her family. The Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force have commenced investigations into allegations of unlawful and inappropriate conduct by free adult males. It is hoped that by weekend, the Dominica Police Force would be in a position to shed further light on those investigations and also to advise on any consequent course of action. Even if someone is charged in a sexual offense case, the accused and the victim cannot be named since the country's Sexual Offenses Act of 1998 speaks to an anonymity of those involved in sex crimes. I would like to appeal to members of the Dominican public, resident at home and abroad, particularly the media, to cooperate with law enforcement by allowing these investigations to run their full course. The administration of justice is hindered when rampant speculation and falsehoods are used to contaminate the investigative process. The NGO Coalition on Child Welfare continues to meet with the relevant departments on the proper handling of investigations into recent unlawful conduct against an underage girl. The matter reached the hands of the NGO Coalition before police investigation started. Newly appointed chairman of the NGO Coalition, Philip Carlyle, says as of recently, several allegations of child sexual abuse have surfaced. We are aware we have been aware of it. Um, well, actually, we had a meeting with Welfare yesterday morning and, and um, shared our concerns. 
and um, made some recommendations also as to how we think situation must be dealt with or, or and stuff and, and then we also met with the police yesterday and uh, we had discussions with them and I must say the, the, the police have been very very responsive uh, and um, are, taking, are taking matters from our standpoint very seriously. The NGO coalition would refer allegations brought to their attention to the police and social welfare division based on evidence received. Carlyle says they want to ensure it is dealt with by the correct officials. Although it may seem to be a slow process, but, but um, we want to give them space to be able to um, um, look into all of the evidence if there, if there are, because at this time we, it is still to some extent. There's so much going on, especially in social media, that um, some of these things are, are still allegations until proven otherwise but um it's very unfortunate and um I, and it's 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 a painful situation we hope that out of what's going on that um every other situation will find legs out of this city of out of what's going on to be able to find redress especially the victims Plans have been stepped up to accommodate the construction of the country's new hospital. The health minister says talks were held with personnel of the Princess Margaret Hospital to alert them of the unavoidable challenges of this project. We would have met with the Ministry of Health and the personnel, the doctor, the PMH, everybody to try to put the, what they call a continuation plan in place. And we are looking at the options available before us um, to ensure that minimal, um, to ensure minimal um, interference, the obstruction yes, of, of the normal services. There will be, there will be interference, and, and, but we are seeking help from people who have um, had that experience. But I'm very confident, as I said, that, that this, this would, it's not like it will go through seamlessly, it will never be seamless. I mean, you can understand being in a construction site in an active hospital, but I'm, I'm hoping, I'm very confident that after having spoken to met with the doctors at the PMH, we had this seminar recently, that everybody was upbeat, you know, that hey, we are go it, this is going to be our new national hospital, that we are going to, to make it work. Okay, so. A team of Chinese professionals is currently in Dominica to do preliminary works on the upgrade of the Princess Margaret Hospital. We should see the, an advanced team, not to begin actual construction, but to start looking at, for example, um, the issue of the phasing out plan, you know, which buildings are going to be demolished first, etc., etc. Um, but we... But I'm confident that I said that, 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 that we will get there and in the next three years or so we should be commissioned in our new national hospital. Arrangements are ongoing to have a matter which is challenging Carnival Road parade results amicably resolved before a court hearing next week. An inter-parties hearing on the 11th of March will determine whether a court injunction on the issuing of the adult Band of the Year prize will continue. The court injunction was handed out to Colin Piper, chairman of the Dominica Festivals Committee, on February 25. The claimants, Thunderbirds Inc. and Emmanuel Loblack of Carnival Corner, say they want a review of the Tuesday parade results, which has found the Africulture Stilt Walkers the best carnival costume band. Chairman of Discover Dominica Authority, Ben Wabadwell, says on their side they are hoping that they, along with the claimants, can settle this before the March 11 hearing. So an internal investigation is being done because um, we have the judges who actually uh, provide the necessary information for us. So based on the queries raised, um, we are in fact doing the investigation to ensure that uh, we provide accurate information um, once again to the um, request being made. The queries raised, um, I don't want to discuss it too much, it's, it's, it's a legal matter, but I, I would say that um, they asked about the two rounds being made, and they also asked about the number of adults, which is the criteria within the band. I'm sure uh, based on the internal investigations, all the necessary details will be pulled out from that. Badwell describes the situation as a strange occurrence since it is the first time Carnival Road Parade results are being legally challenged. The African Steel Walkers um, have put on a particularly uh, great performance, including um, the various um, components of the band that they had. 
but surely going forward, um, it would mean that we'd have to review clearly some of the things that we're doing now uh, going forward so that uh, there can be greater transparency in terms of how we do it. Badwell says they have not yet met with the claimants, but in the meantime, a complete review with the DFC will be done to ensure that all carnival revelers meet with the judging criteria to avoid these issues in the future. During the post-carnival review that we had, um, it, did, it did come up somehow, and, and, and the, around the discussion, uh, it was pointed out that it would you know, much rather have discussion around the table, which is what we would love to have. People have the right, and they reserve the right to, to, to challenge anything, and uh, we think we live in a democratic society which allows persons uh, the free will to be able to do those things. Coming up, an effort to increasing flights into the country. Welcome back. Tourism authorities continue to build on efforts at securing added flights into Dominica. Dominica is eyeing French airline Air Antilles based at Point of Pete, Guadeloupe to service Dominica through the Canefield Airport. Air Antilles operates eight aircraft. It flies to Martinique, French St. Martin, St. Bart, St. Lucia and the Dominican Republic. Um, and we're working on now Air Antilles um, to do Martinique, Dominica. Um, hopefully uh, through uh, Canefield uh, with a uh, 19-seater. This will be new. That will be new. That will be an addition to um, what's happening. Because one of the concentrations that we are trying to put is on the French West Indies. Uh, we have a considerable amount of our passengers do come from the French West Indies. Yes, we have the ferry, but we cannot have only the ferry as an option. And we're trying to increase flights um, from the French West Indies, Martinique, Guadeloupe, and so we, we are making increasing our marketing efforts in, in those uh, two territories. Badwell says they continue to discuss with airline companies to ensure the resumption of flights to the normal schedule prior to Tropical Storm Erica. Surely uh, we are continuing to dialogue with the airlines. Uh, we have uh, flights um, originating in Winnie, uh, doing five days a week into Canefield. Uh, using twin otters. They're also utilizing um, the ATR-42 at Douglas Charles Airport. I think they're doing the going on a seven-day um, call, calls from there. So they're doing daily calls into Douglas Charles and at the same time doing five days at uh, Canefield. Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, has urged regional governments to be proactive towards changing global trends. Timothy Antoine of Grenada says the Eastern Caribbean Economic Union must stand firm against threats to the ECCU. What I envisage is that we are going to be proactive. We are going to look around the global arena. We are going to see the trends. We are going to acknowledge the realities. And we want to be proactively advising our government about how to meet opportunities and to address threats. Or seize opportunities and to address threats. And we don't want to be reactive. Where we are engaging in sunset industries when it's almost midnight, because of course there's no real prospect there. We have to be proactive, and that's a role I see for the bank. Antoine says there are fiscal rules which the ECCB has put in place to help move the economic union forward. I also believe we have to be monitoring credible and effective fiscal rules. I think all of you know we have a target uh, debt to GDP ratio of 60% by 2030. For us to accomplish that as a currency union, we will need credible and effective fiscal rules. Without those, 2030 may roll around and we may not meet that target. And so it's going to be very important for us to have those rules and for us to set interim targets as we move towards 2030. The governor says there are four critical areas which the ECCB has to develop. One, financial stability. Everyone knows that we are responsible for regulating, supervising commercial banks. But financial stability is about both banks and non-banks. Fiscal and debt sustainability. Growth, competitiveness, and employment, I think they speak for themselves. We believe the bank, the central bank, has an important role to play there. And therefore, the fourth strategic priority is enhancing organizational effectiveness. We have to make sure that our setup allows us to deliver. 
The Meteorology Service is warning against taking the dry period for granted due to concerns brought about as a result of Tropical Storm Erica. Based on its March drought outlook issued on Monday, the Caribbean Climate Outlook Forum has placed the country under a drought warning. Weather forecasters are paying close attention to current drought forecasts as the country continues to experience below normal rainfall. In 2015, the lowest amount of rainfall was recorded at both airports since 1974. So from July of 2015, the island of Dominica was placed under drought warning. And what does that mean for us? It means that our rainfall will be at a deficit. Most times, persons interpret drought as no rainfall, but that's not the case. It's simply a deficit in your rainfall amounts. And we have seen proof of that for 2015. Previous to that, 2014 was second year of lowest rainfall. And for this year, 2016, we are expecting these drought conditions to continue at least up to the end of the dry season. The weather will transition from the dry period to above to normal rainfall totals, which essentially means increased rainfall activity. Impacts of this could be you have dry compacted soils from this prolonged dry period. Now, when this rain come, we expect them to come with great intensity. What happens? The water won't be able to be absorbed into the soil. You have more surface runoffs and then which may eventually lead to flood, as you saw for Tropical Storm Erica. This was one of the causes of all this flooding that we saw for Erica. We came from a period of dry conditions for maybe about two or three months of dry conditions, and there we had that high-intensity rainfall. What happened? The soils were compact. Water were not able to absorb as quickly as the rainfall was coming. So you have all these surface runoffs, which led to all this flooding and landslides. Joseph says it's normal for storm conditions to develop out of the tropical Atlantic hurricane season. As in the case of Hurricane Alex, the first tropical system to form in the Atlantic hurricane basin for 2016. It disappeared near Portugal two days after its formation in January. But for this year, because El Nino expected to return back to normal, and eventually to La Nina, you have weaker westerly winds, therefore our storms will be developing without that much of an influence. And therefore we expect an increase in our rainfall activity and tropical storms in the area as well. And the president of the Dominica Builders and Contractors Association is calling for the greater inclusion of its association in the post Erica recovery exercise. Anthony Leblanc says builders and contractors play a critical role in rebuilding a country in the wake of a natural disaster and therefore should be better integrated into the process. It's interesting that out of a 10-member National Reconstruction Task Force, only one person was appointed in construction sector infrastructure-based experience and knowledge, and that's Mr. Burnett here. It's interesting that the public sector did little to engage local construction professionals to discuss as a chat how the recovery path. At one point I said, why don't you bring some of us together and let's discuss what we have, what the resources are, and let's identify what the needs are. There was never such meeting with the, with, with the construction sector. Um, the only meeting I know we had was to help pull down to determine the cost so we go as guys. It can't be the only the only value that the local construction sector has. Leblanc also called for a closer inspection of the country's development plan. We need to examine the appropriateness of our national development plan, as we have said before, review our design criteria and parameters, engaging the human capital, recognizing opportunities, and we can discuss where we are in the process. Were our design parameters inappropriate? That's a question we have to ask. We are dealing with a hundred year plus storm event. The rainfall which accompanied Tropical Storm Erica is being described as a once in a lifetime event and Leblanc says the country has to be smart on how it constructs buildings for future occurrences. And we have to face the economic realities of design. Can we afford to be designing for hundred year rainfall probability? Yes, it's probability and you could have one this year and one next year but the probability is that you won't have one again for 
20 generations. Rather, I think we should spend more time and money on quality assurance and research, zoning, and time level evaluation and maintenance of infrastructure. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. Hello everyone and welcome to the Sports Report. Fresh on the track and field scene. Yet another secondary schools competition on the way as the secondary schools athletics championship kicked off on Wednesday. Sports coordinator Trevor Schillingford spoke at the opening ceremony where he highlighted the significance of the championships for high school athletes. The secondary schools track and field meet is the basis for selecting Dominica's track and field team to participate at the Windward Island Secondary School Games during the summer. And we have also ensured that our students who are vying for selection to represent Dominica at the Carifter Games during the Easter weekend are given a final opportunity to meet the qualifying standards. Schillingford reminded athletes that the onus is on them to meet the qualifying standard for the upcoming track and field events. My hope is that you students will grab the opportunities given to you and will go out on the field and on the track and display the best performances so that you can state your claim for selection. Meantime, six sporting programs are confirmed for the 2016 academic year that were inadvertently affected by Tropical Storm Erica. After the passage of Tropical Storm Erica, we were informed that a number of programs, we would have to revisit these programs in order to achieve some level of savings. We did not want to compromise these programs, so we went out on a hunt for achieving some financial support. And I'm happy to say that we have received sponsorship for six of our sporting activities that will be held for the rest of the um, academic year. In cricket, West Indies cricket coach Phil Simmons is confident that placing greater attention on his team's fielding could make the Windies a force to reckon with at the T20 World Cup beginning in India next week. The West Indies will meet up against Warwick Shear on Friday after having defeated Zimbabwe in a series that ended Monday. In case of making sure that we get that uh, standard where people are afraid of us in the field and, and we have the capability that we have the players who can show that sort of um, um, put that fear into other people in the field. I think we as a unit have to make sure that we everybody's doing their, their job and if we can get it to that stage by the, by the 16th then people in, for, people in for sure. Moving on to football, two Petro Caribbean Point Michel players have been suspended and one match is scheduled to be replayed in the DFA organized Division 1 league. Gerald George has details. Danny Williams and Peter Toussaint of Petro Caribe Point Michel have been suspended with immediate effect pending a hearing of the disciplinary committee for their behavior in their match against Itasi United on February 24, 2016 at the Pori Plain Field. Meanwhile, the match between Petro Caribe Point Michel and Itasi United, which ended prematurely last week, will be replayed on Thursday 3rd March at the Newton Plain Field at 6 p.m. The semi-final of the league will be played on Sunday at a venue to be announced. The winner of Thursday's match will take on RC Doctors in the first match, while in the second match, RIC Kensbro will come up against Wacky Rollers. Meantime, the final match of the season in the Premier Division football is scheduled for Saturday. And the curtains will come down on the full Premier League on Saturday when Buffet State Football Club takes on Caribbean Cool Harlem United at the Pori playing field at 3 p.m. Buffet State has already secured the second position on 32 points. Dubla Football Club won the title two weekends ago with an untouchable 36 points. That's all the sports for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us again next time. Next, we take a look back at how our demand and our natural resources have led to changes in when and for how long we are able to hunt. Flashback is next. 
Welcome to another segment of Flashback where we take you back into our archives of interesting news events which occurred in Dominica. We came across an interesting clip in our archives and really wanted to share with you. March 1st officially marks the closure of the hunting season in respect of wildlife and freshwater fish. The annual close season is a management tool used by the Forestry and Wildlife Division where all the wildlife, both native and migratory, are given the opportunity to reproduce and raise their young ones without being unduly disturbed by man's hunting activities. We want the future generation to be able to identify with what Dominica have. And if we're going to promote Dominica as a nature island of the Caribbean, we want the visitor, when they come here, to enjoy what Dominicans have, to find exactly what we promote overseas as really and truly Dominican. Fast track to today, the opening and closing dates for hunting season, which was from September 1st to the last day in February, now has changed to the 1st of October to the last day in December, December 31st. The season was shortened due to the availability of feed, the frequency of hurricanes which destroys habitat for both feeding and living, and also the demand for wild meat which grew extensively through the years. Another interesting clip from our archives. I am Janik Delmar Samuel. Join us next week as we share more interesting news events from our archives on Mapping 2K4. Good evening, Dominica, and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm a presenter, Marsha Alexander. We begin by taking a look at earlier infrared satellite imagery and what it showed. Some weak unstable conditions continue to produce an increasing cloudiness across the region during today. Taking a look at earlier satellite imagery, what it showed. Some low-level clouds which moved across the area today, mainly across the northern portion of the region. This resulted in partly cloudy to cloudy skies across Dominica during today. Now, taking a look at earlier radar imagery, what it indicated, scattered showers mainly across the extreme northern portion of the region. Tonight's weather is expected to be partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy with a few brief scattered showers and these conditions are expected to continue into tomorrow. Sea conditions are expected to be moderate in open water with waves up to 7 feet. Conditions for the next three days, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies with a few scattered showers can be expected on Thursday and Friday with an increase in cloudiness and scattered showers expected as we move into Saturday. Conditions for the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow. An increase in cloudiness and scattered showers can be expected across the central and northern portion of the region with a relative improvement in conditions expected across the extreme southern portion of the island chain. Our international cities forecast. Clear skies can be expected in New York. Partly cloudy skies expected in Miami and Caracas with cloudy skies expected in London and Beijing. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 6.21 a.m. and sunset at 6.14 p.m. For more information, you can call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit our website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Police investigate allegations of inappropriate conduct against a minor by prominent public figures. Hospital officials told to prepare for unavoidable challenges as plans for a new hospital enter a new phase. And Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank warns against global threats to the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also catch our past newscasts on our YouTube page. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Andrea Lee. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.